I, Douglas Ducote, an American patriot by the grace of God, do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America from enemies foreign and especially domestic. I, Douglas Ducote, an American patriot by the grace of God, do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America from enemies foreign and especially domestic. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, American patriots, and welcome to another edition of the Douglas Ducote Show. You had many pleasures you could be tonight. You chose to be here with me, and for that, I am forever grateful. Thank you very, very much. I want to start off tonight talking about uh, the press conference that was held today at the White House. Jane Bray, and also uh, John Kirby. John Kirby, during the press conference today, was asked by Fox News' Peter Ducey why President Biden praised Qatar for their assistance and help getting American hostages out of Palestine, when it is Qatar that is allowing the leader of Hamas to reside in their country. Freely. Kirby argued that Qatar had been helpful in getting Americans out of Gaza and that the nation was a key player in the talks. He then said Qatar has lines of communication with Hamas that almost no one else has. He went on to say, now, I'm not saying we support Hamas. We don't. They're a terrorist organization. And Israel has absolutely every right to go after them. But Qatar has lines of communication that no one else has. Well, of course they do. Because they're allowing the leader of Hamas to live in their country. You stupid idiot. He then claimed the administration would bear the brunt of media criticism if they weren't doing everything they could to get the Americans being held hostage out. However, Kirby did not address Ducey's question over Qatar allowing the leader Hamas to reside in the country. So I, like many American patriots, would love to know why we're not telling Qatar to hand over the leader of this terrorist organization. Why are they doing this? On one hand, supposedly, they're negotiating to get hostages back. I guess that's a good thing. But at the same time, they're harboring the leader of the terrorist organization that is attacking Israel, that kidnapped these American hostages and other Israelis. Things that make you go... This just doesn't add up, and that's one of them. Speaking of things that do not add up, and I don't even know, I, I don't know how this happened or why it's happening. We, we've known for a long time, folks. I, I've been telling you about this forever, that we have Republicans up in Washington, D.C. that do not need to be there and should have been removed from office a long, long time ago. And here's a prime example. 23 House Republicans voted to sink Taylor Greene's censor resolution accusing Congresswoman Rashid Tlaib of leading an insurrection at the Capitol. 23 Republicans. Representative Green's attempt to censor Tlaib failed yesterday 
in part thanks to three of Tlaib's home state Republican colleagues. A majority of the Republican-led House voted to table the Georgia Republicans' censor resolution, which accused the Michigan Democrat of being anti-Semitic, sympathetic with terrorists, and leading an insurrection. 23 Republicans voted with Democrats to table Green's resolution. The Georgia Congresswoman notably has her own history of anti-Semitic uh, speech and once suggested that Tlaib was not a legitimate member of Congress because she has sworn in with the Quran rather than the Bible. I agree. The resolution relied on several of Tlaib's past comments and positions, including suggesting that she felt a calm feeling when thinking about the Holocaust and characterization or criticism of Israel and anti-Semitic. Tlaib, the sole Palestinian American in Congress, has indeed irked some of her Jewish colleagues by describing Israel as a parent state, a term employed by several international human rights organizations. The resolution also characterized a sit-in protest on Capitol Hill led by two Jewish and anti-Zionist groups, F. Not Now and Jewish Voice for Peace, as an insurrection. The October 19th protest included a large crowd outside the Capitol and a sit-in in the rotunda of the Cannon House office building. Tlaib spoke to the crowd outside, speaking her anti-Israel hate. Our Republicans are quick to criticize Tlaib. Green's resolution apparently went too far for some of them, and a handful appeared to make their opposition clear in the days before the vote. Notably, half of the Republicans in Michigan voted to table the resolution. Here are the 23 Republicans who voted to table Green's resolution. Before I read you this list of names, I just want to say this much. As far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure as far as any military veteran is concerned, or a military member who has served in the Middle East up against these terrorists, anyone who sympathizes with Hamas, in Palestine, who allows Hamas to be there in the first place, is also a terrorist sympathizer. I, for one, said it doesn't do any good to censor her. Why are we censoring her? The hell with that. Expel her from Congress. You have the power to do that, providing you get enough votes. If all the Republicans voted to expel her, she would no longer be in our United States Congress. She doesn't deserve to be in our United States Congress. She's anti-American, she's anti-Jewish, she's anti-military, she's anti-veterans, and she's also anti-law enforcement. The woman has no place there, just like Alihan Omar should be gone a long time ago. But instead, they went to just censor her. And these 23 Republicans said, oh, no, she's a wonderful person. Let's keep her. Who are they? Representative Kelly Armstrong of North Dakota, Representative Ken Buck of Colorado, Representative John Drake of California, Representative Chuck Edwards of North Carolina, Representative Morgan Griffin of Virginia, Representative Glenn Grotham of Wisconsin, Representative Harriet Hegman of Wyoming, Representative Bill uh, Huskin of Michigan, Representative Daryl Isis of California, Representative Dusty Johnson of South Dakota, Representative Doug LaMoffa of California, Representative Thomas Macy of, Calif of Kentucky, Representative Tom, Tom McTalk of California, Representative Mitch McCormick of Georgia, Representative Max Miller of Ohio, Representative Marita Miller Meeks of Iowa, Representative John uh, Morlar of Michigan, Representative Chip Roy of Texas, didn't see that coming. Representative Austin Scott of Georgia, didn't see that coming. Representative Victoria Sparks of India, uh, Indiana. Representative Michael Turner of Ohio. Representative Derek Van Orden of Wisconsin. And Representative Tim Walbert of Michigan. Those Republican members of Congress, as far as I'm concerned, as far as 
probably 99.9% of American veterans and probably 99.9% .9 of the men and women serving in uniform today having to fight against these radical Islamic terrorists. Those Republicans that I just named are just as guilty of support, uh, supporting Hamas and supporting horrible hatred towards Israel because that's what Tlaib and Omar do. They say horrible and hateful things and, as far as I'm concerned, are instigating a riot, instigating these college students to act up on campuses, instigating all the hatred that's happening across the country right now against the Jewish people. That is some sick crap that has taken place. And why are these 23 Republicans siding with Democrats and did not at least censor her, I have no idea. So you can imagine if something like expelling her from Congress was on the table, it had never passed with these 23 that won't even censor her. Now, you would think that was bad enough, right? Hmm. Hold on a second. In battle, Repu uh, Representative Georgia, uh, George Santos, Republican New York, escaped being expelled from the House of Representatives last night after a group of his fellow New York Republicans spearheaded an effort to boot him. The final vote fell 213 to 179 against expelling Santos, with 19 lawmakers voting present. Expelling a member of the House, something that is historically rare, requires a vote of two-thirds of all members present. Two dozen Republicans voted to expel Santos, while 31 Democrats voted to keep him in the House. The Democrats. There's more Democrats in this body that believe in the rule of law than there are Republicans. That's what you should know, Santos told reporters after the vote. I'm fighting to clear my name. I'm fighting for due process. The New York Republican who led the expulsion effort were Anthony DeSoto, Nick Lalota, La uh, La and Mike Lawler. Santos spoke in his own defense earlier on the House floor, accusing the Republicans who moved against him of playing judge, jury, and executioner. Didn't have to do that. <laughs> We've seen your speech and the things that you said that were lies. You are a walking, talking, pathological liar that is mentally ill. Efforts taken by other members in this body to act as jury and executioner are unconscionable and reckless to our Republican system of government and to the integrity of this body, Santos said. I stand today to continue to prove my innocence of these allegations and charges levels against me. And I'd like to say I understand the point of view of my colleagues, but I don't. One can't say that they are pro-Constitution and at the same time act as judge, jury, and executioner. Jesus. Where is the consistency? Santos was the only member of Congress to speak in his defense during debate ahead of the resolution. The scandal played Republican has been charged with conspiracy, wire fraud, making false statements, fabricating records, aggravated identity theft, and credit card fraud just last month. He faces a total of 23 charges. Most of those you can see right here on YouTube if you just put in his name and listen to the things this man said trying to become a member of Congress. He lied about everything. He lied about his education. He lied about where he's worked. It's just nothing but lies. And we get to keep him. We get to keep him. How special is that? I remember the Democrats when all this came out and people were able to see the videos of the lies that he was telling they were jumping on Republicans, screaming, how dare you allow somebody like this 
and your ranks. And now they're siding with him. Isn't that special? House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan opened an investigation yesterday into the intelligence community's alleged obstruction of Senator Chuck Grassley and Senator Ron Johnson 2020 investigation into Hunter Biden by casting their work as an advancement of Russian disinformation. Jordan, Republican Ohio, who also chairs the Select Committee on the Weaponization of Federal Government, sent a letter to Director of National Intelligence, uh, Avril Hayes, demanding information on the efforts by officials to debunk their probe. Grassley, Republican Ohio, and Johnson, Republican West, uh, Wisconsin, began investigating Hunter Biden and his business dealings with Ukraine and other foreign nations in 2019. In August 2020, Grassley and Johnson were given a briefing by the FBI, a briefing that the senators have since called, described as improper, and one that was delivered with pressure from congressional Democrats and ahead of the 2020 election. The defense briefing on August 6, 2020, was delivered by FBI officials, including then Deputy Assistant Director of Counterintelligence, Nikki Flores, and the FBI's then Section Chief of the Foreign Influence Task Force, Bradley Benenvis. The officials briefed Grassley and Johnson on the threat of Russian disinformation. Although the FBI claims that the briefing focused on Russia, the information that Flores and Benenvis conveyed to the senators consistent primarily of information that the senators already knew and information unconnected to their Biden investigation. The briefing, the existence of which was later leaked, hampered the senators' investigation into Hunter Biden's financial connections to foreign governments and foreign nationals, Jordan wrote to Haynes Wednesday. Jordan pointed to Grassley and Johnson's letter to Flores uh, after the briefing, calling it unnecessary, and a briefing that provided the Democrats and liberal media the vehicle to spread their false narrative that our work advanced Russian disinformation. Although you stated that the FBI didn't intend to interfere in our investigation, the practical effect of such an unnecessary briefing and the substantial leaks relating to the created interference, which frustrated and obstructed congressional oversight efforts. But Jordan conducted a transcribed interview with Flores, who said that while the briefing was delivered by FBI officials, the intelligence used to justify the senator's defense briefing did not come from the FBI, but rather from ODNI. Specifically, she testified that ODNI owns the whole process. ODNI took the lead in drafting the script used to brief Senator Grassley and Johnson. She further testified, I would certainly defer you to ODNI as far as the specifics that were in the transcript. It wasn't FBI collected information, Jordan wrote. Jordan added that during a transcript interview with Ben Impis in September, he testified that he and Flores had briefed Bras uh, Brasley and Johnson at the request of ODNI. He further testified that the script used to brief the senators been coordinated through the ODNI framework and then delivered in the instance by Nikki Flores, Jordan wrote. Flores and Benibis made it unequivocally clear that ODNI and its notification framework were integral in the pretextual defense briefing meant to frustrate and obstruct congressional oversight into the Biden family's overseas influence peddling operation. Jordan is requesting Haynes and ODNI turn over the script, including all drafts of the script that ODNI prepared for the FBI to brief Grassley and Johnson on August 6, 2020. He also requested all documents and communication referring to the briefing, a list of intelligence community agencies, and nominated the intelligence that serves as the basis for the briefing, and a list of the individuals involved in the decision to provide the briefing. Bottom line is, the FBI was actively involved in spreading false information that everything about Hunter Biden and the laptop 
was Russian disinformation. They've been paying millions of dollars to social media platforms to push that it was false information, Russian information. And therefore, that's exactly what they did. And now we know that it was all bullshit. It was true what was happening with Hunter Biden and the laptop. It was all vetted. It was the real deal. He's a criminal piece of garbage. Yet the FBI was covering for him. I've been very critical of Black Lives Matter in the past. They have, uh, their, their, their entire philosophy, their ideology is based on a false narrative. A false narrative, basically, hands up, don't shoot. Going back to Ferguson, Missouri, and Michael Brown being killed by a Ferguson police officer. The lies that were told by a few witnesses that Michael Brown had his hands up and was saying, don't shoot. And the officer gunned him down anyhow and shot him in the back. All this turned out to be false. It wasn't true. Turned out that Michael Brown did attack the police officer, was punching him and beating him, trying to take his gun away from him and trying to kill the officer. The officer reacted in self-defense only. Michael Brown was about twice the size of the police officer, and he was high on drugs. Yet the police officer, he's ruined for life, although no charges were brought against him. But at that time, the Obama administration sent out representatives to represent the president at Michael Brown's funeral, for crying out loud. And when the investigations were all said and done, local investigations, state investigations, and the federal investigations, which, oh, by the way, was done by Eric Holder, who is a black man at the Department of Justice at the time, came up and said it was a justified shooting by the police officer. And Michael Brown was the thug and the bad guy. Yet, Black Lives Matter continued pushing the false narrative and still continues to push the false narrative today, along with their poster boy, Colin Kaepernick, or as I like to call him, Colin kaepernick nappyhead. Colin Kaepernick believes that all police officers wake up every day and the first thought they have as they're putting on their uniform is how many innocent young black men may I shoot and kill today, which is absolutely insane. Or there are a few bad apples in law enforcement. Oh, you bet your ass there are. And as we find them, we weed their ass out. Sometimes it goes into deep corruption and it goes through several officers, but we get rid of them. But the overall majority of our law enforcement officers in America wake up every day to serve and protect their community and their citizens. It isn't for pay because they sure as hell don't make much. And because of Colin Kaepernick and because of all these millionaire NFL players and NBA players and all the college sports, as well as professional athletes that take a knee during the national anthem and Black Lives Matter. Because of all that, the false narrative, well, now these cops also have a target on their back and many have been killed based on information that wasn't true. So here we go. A Black Lives Matter activist has been sentenced to two and a half years in prison after she was found guilty of funneling tens of thousands of dollars in fundraising donations from her organization into her personal bank account, leading to her living an expensive lifestyle, according to the reports. The BBC reported that 23-year-old Xer Shellman of London served as the director of a charity that benefited disadvantaged youth 
in Bristol called Changing Your Mindset. Shellen was also an organizer for Black Lives Matter protests on June 7th, 2020, in response to the death of George Floyd in the U.S. During the protest, she was seen as one of the marchers of a protest that ended with a uh, statue of Everett Colston, a slave trader, getting toppled and dumped into the Bristol Harbor. Before marching and taking down the statue of Colston, Summon set up a fundraising page to purchase personal protective equipment, the BBC said, to facilitate the BLM march. The march took place when COVID-19 pandemic restrictions were in place. She raised over 32, uh, 39,000 US dollars and transferred the money to her personal bank account. Between June 20th and September 2021, she spent the money on such things as a new iPhone, hair, beauty appointments, clothing, Amazon orders, taxis, and other purchases. Judge Michael Oman, who presided over the trial, said she made more than 2,500 payments from her account during that time frame, describing it as a consistent leakage over a significant period of time. She ultimately pleaded guilty to fraud after abusing her position as director of Changing Your Mindset. Judge Loman told her that when she raised money for Changing Your Mindset, it was a worthwhile cause, but when she used the funds for her own benefit, not the benefit of the children, she was funding a lifestyle for herself that she could not otherwise have afforded in the absence of a business account to pay the money uh, in, uh, into the decision was made to pay it into her own account is an interim measure the judge said the others involved in the project trusted you to hold the fund securely until a better arrangement could be made there should have been no reason why the money could not be transferred into the account the problems became apparent the judge said the money was not transferred and you made excuses for that failure. So she's going to go away and she's going to do some time in jail. BLM is very active all over the fucking country. Yet we know that right here in America, oh, out in California, the leaders of Black Lives Matter, their women, did the exact same thing. They went from being poor people to organizing these Black Lives Matter groups and today live in multi-million dollar mansions in California, driving Mercedes Benz and Jaguars, flying across the world, going to France, going to Hawaii, going all over Europe, eating in fancy hotels. They're living like millionaires. None of that money or a small percentage of it went to help black lives. But these black women that were in charge are living high on the hog while people just kept donating. Why are they not in jail? FBI, Department of Justice. Britain did the right thing when they found out what their lady was doing, they charged her and they put her in jail. Here in America, we're giving them a slap on the wrist maybe, or nothing at all. Because in many cases across this country, look, a lot of innocent people were injured and hurt due to Black Lives Matter and Antifa joining in as well. Not all Black Lives Matter protesters were bad people. Some of them were good people. But the majority turned out to be violent thugs, setting police cars on fire, torching a police station, running the cops out in the mayor saying, oh, stand down. Don't engage them. Just let them get in another system as they went about looting businesses and then setting them on fire. They did that to a post office. They did it to uh, Targets, to Walgreens, to different mom and pop stores. It's pathetic. 
what we allowed them to get away with here in America. I don't understand it. I don't think anyone understands it. It just doesn't make any sense. Yet, here we are. Anyhow, folks, tonight's show, uh, show is going to be cut a little short because I have uh, some family that's coming over tonight to visit us. And uh, I need to prepare for that. Uh, as always, please say a prayer for our men and women serving the United States military, our veterans, our law enforcement officers, our first responders, and their families. Our angel families, our blue and gold star families, and our country. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless each and every one of you. Whatever you're doing this weekend, hope you're safe. Hope you have a fun and wonderful weekend. And I hope you will tune back in next week right here, Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central for another episode of the Douglas Ducote Show, sharing with you, the American patriots of this country and patriots of any country for that matter, that wanna know the truth about what is happening in American politics, in America, with our systems of corruption, as well as the same in many places around the world. Take care everyone, God bless, and I'll see you soon.